The new season is upon us. Big match preview is back. West Ham go into this game against Bournemouth with potentially three new signings in the match day squad. Dan, it wasn't looking like we could say stuff like that leading up to this fixture, but all of a sudden, the wheels are turning. London buses, mate. London buses. You wait all <laughs> summer for one and free turn up. Alvarez uh, is done. Ward Prowse, it uh, looks like that's going to be done. And Maguire, Harry mm-hmm. Maguire, as well as another one that could be done in time for Saturday. It's, it's crazy, mate. It's absolutely crazy. It is. It is. And, you know, it sort of um, makes things look a bit rosier. You know, we've, we've been a bit panicked lately, haven't we? You know, with, with no new signings through the door. The only Premier League club without signings. I think Bournemouth have signed about seven players. You know, or so, or, you know, looking at loan signings as well. And this, you, you sit there and think, you know, other teams are doing their business and we're not. And, you know, the, the season's here. The season starts sat. Well, obviously, the season kicks off Friday night uh, is the Premier League season. But our season starts on Saturday. And, you know, news coming out that Man City after Pakatar, obviously, we've already lost Declan Rice. You know, if it wasn't for the signing of Alvarez and the potential signing of Wall Prowse, we could have gone into this season with two midfielders. Yeah, yeah mate, it, it could be absolutely disastrous. And that's the thing, like, currently talk seems to be going on with between Man City and West Ham over Paqueta. Um, So there is every chance that he might not be available on Saturday. And if he is, you know, is his mind going to be on the game? Is he, is he been, you know, is, he, is his mind going to be focused now that the treble yeah. winners are in for him? It's it's a weird time ahead of this this first game. I don't think I've ever felt this way before first game of the season. Mate. Yeah. It feels like pure chaos right now. Yeah, and and you are right, mate. That's that's what it does seem like. It just seems like a chaos. No one seems to know what's going on. It's not the best preparation going into this, you know, this this first game. You know, Paquet or Pakatar, sorry, he's you know, looking to be we all thought he'd be our main man this season. And then this pops up out of literally nowhere. You know, whether I know the club were quick to sort of knock it back in the first place, but you know, are they still chatting? Are they still communicating about it? And like you said, this will potentially affect the lineup um on Saturday because I thought we were going to try and build a team around Pakatar. And, you know, you, I know Moyes Divers, but you've got to feel for a bit going into, what, three or four days before the start of the season and we're losing our best centre midfielder, potentially losing yeah, our best And one of our bigger bigger creators as well, um, mm. you know, which means we would that's another play on top of a strike and now we have to go and replace, and, you know, other positions, left back, all of that. We need someone who can create and... You know, Alvarez, I think, you know, he's a good signing. And to me, mm. I don't know what he's done in terms of pre-season or his fitness, but you feel like just in terms of quality, I would definitely be tempted to chuck him straight in based on what we've yeah. got at the club. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Ward-Prowse and Maguire. I mean, obviously, Ward-Prowse has been with Southampton. Maguire's been with Man United. Both, I think, have got pre-seasons under their belt. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, when we look at... F- you know, formations and stuff, how we think we line up next, see what Moyes' plans are. Do you think we're going to be looking to play five at the back with Maguire in? Do you think that's the plan for this season? I think so, mate. I think if Maguire comes through the door, I think you're looking at a, a Maguire, Aguerd and Zuma back three. You know, and then, and then it's just, you know, Emerson we know is much more suited to playing that left wing back position than he is as a left back. So it's just getting that right full back, uh, well, right wing back um position there right you know look Soufal as we know gives all gives his all you know good defender but his delivery um getting down the line isn't always great and you know it's it'd be interesting to see what he does but I I I do think it will be a sort of five slash three at the back um that we're going to see if Maguire does get finalized and put through the door I know you want to talk about the, the game we're going to talk about I, I want to know your opinion on Maguire and Ward Price as signings you know obviously well, mate, I think Alvarez. they're good signings yeah yeah Alvarez I don't know much about I think what you were touching on with what his pre-season that he's been playing for Ajax I'm sure that he would have had a full pre-season playing for them same as Maguire and and Ward Price you know we know Ward Price played for Southampton on Saturday um, 
and pr- apparently run the show. So I expect them all to come fully fit. Do I expect them to start straight away? Knowing Moyes, I don't expect Alvarez to go straight into the eleven. I think if Maguire and Will Prowse are done before, I think it's 12 o'clock on Friday, I could see one of the two of them going straight into the eleven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, especially, look, if, if he is looking to play uh, a five at the back, I, I think he'll put Maguire straight in. You know, he's been mm. desperate for Maguire. He's been, you know, really adamant that it's a player that we should be signing. And I think it's a good Moy signing. Like, I think it's a good yeah. Moy. I'm not, I'm not in love with Maguire, but I think he suits the manager. And if we do play that five at the back, he suits the system. My problem was just looking at him in terms of long, long term. You know, after Moy, yeah. if we do want to play better football with a with a with a more progressive manager, he, he's going to be a man out of out of place. And Ward Prowse, I think, is a solid signing. Again, it doesn't. Yeah. It's not one of the most exciting signings for me that we've made that really gets me buzzing. But I think I feel like he's a he's just a better Snodgrass, and I, I did I did like Snodgrass here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I I I really warmed to Snodgrass, but yeah, yeah. I, I think he's offers a lot, and that that dead ball you know ability, like probably cl- the closest probably feeling we'll get to free kicks when since Payet was on him, mm. and and we know our corners are shocking. Absolutely yep. shocking. So, you know, we, I don't think we're going to play good football this season, but I think it could be effective. Him on corners, set pieces with people mm-hmm. like Maguire in there attacking him, Zuma attacking him. If Suchek's on the pitch, um, you know, him going at him. If Antonio's playing, which he he's pushing for a leave apparently to leave with Creswell, but if he is there, you know, it, it, there's options. We can go back to being them yeah. set piece specialists as a. And get a that's, that's it, mate. You know, we, we were, we, you know, we dominated the season. You know, when we got to the semi final in the Europa League, it was a set piece threat that practically got us in that position. You know, the amount of times Dawson um, was scoring from set pieces, things like that. Like you said, if you add the ability that Will Prowse has, you know, he, I think he got 10 goals last season for in a poor Southampton side. I'm not too sure how many assists he got, but. Just having that quality on the ball, the composure that he brings, you know, if if Pakatar goes does go out the door, it'd be a shame because it would be interesting to see them two playing together. But if we do lose Pakatar, I think Wall Prowse sort of can add that little creative spark in the midfield. Yeah, he's not going to. This is the thing with Alvarez being the focus on defence, you know, mm. then. Warpress doesn't have to worry about that. You know, that's not his strong point. You know, yeah, he can he can intercept the ball, but he, you know, you're not gonna see him really sticking in with the tackles and 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 defending. So if you've got yeah. Alvarez knows his job, but he can also drive forward Alvarez, but you know, getting the ball to War Prowse, who then mm. then can pick out passes. And when I look at War Prowse and um what do you call it, Alvarez. If we do play that wing back system, you have options then because that both of them seem to like those diagonal balls, you know, into the mm-hmm. and yeah. you have those played, and you have a, an Emerson running on one side, and well, it have to be Sufal at the moment on the other into those bits of those those pockets of space. People say running onto mm-hmm. whipping in crosses. We're just going to need players that are effective at attacking those crosses. That's it, mate. That's it. Yeah, and that, and that, that that is the worry. You know, it's do we stick with? Are we going to play a lone striker? Or are we going to play two up top? You know, when when you look at if we do play that five and look to go wide quite a lot, I think Mbama um, would be more suited to play as the lone striker if we if we are playing one up front. But I feel if we play the five at the back, it gives us the freedom to play two up top. Ings and Ings and Bowen or Ings and Mbama. I mean, yeah. you can't. The thing is, if we do play that, like you, can't, I can't see Bowen playing as a right wing back. Uh, no. So no. really, no, yeah. Unless he, we, we, yeah. So if we are playing like a three-five-two, him being the legs and the workhorse, and Ings being that fox in the box, mm-hmm. could be a good partnership. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. It's... and it gives you a bit more fluidity as well. Yeah, you know, in in the system and in the shape. So you know, it's it. it and and the thing is, we've also got to look at it, is Aguirre could play left back potentially. 
what? you know, if we were to go for it at the back, you know, with oh, Creswell okay. yeah. being looking like he's out of the club, I, c- I can't see Creswell being involved at all. You, you wouldn't know, play on, Emerson on left back as a full as an out and out left back because well, I'm, no, I'm just saying it is a, it is an option oh, that right, a player yeah. could play left back. You mean if we don't, you know, find a, another one, another left back? Yeah, yeah, it, with Creswell looking like he's done yeah. at the football I think club, we yeah. will I think we will sign another left back I think there's definitely I'm surprised yeah. Moyes ain't gone in for Luke Shaw you know apparently we're linked with yeah. Martial we might as well go and let's go and get Wamba Saka in <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> which I would take a Wamba well, that's it yeah. to be honest yeah. that's the thing and the thing, the thing is the annoying thing for me is that you know when you look at Bournemouth they've changed manager you know they Gary O'Neill I thought done a quite a good job especially to keep Bournemouth up but they've they've they're going for a different style of play. They've brought in a new manager. I think it's um, Iriola, did we say? Ira, we Ira, sort of worked uh, out. Iraola. Iraola. Iraola, right. So, you know, when he's gone out, he's got his targets. They've brought in Justin Cliver. They've brought in a left back from AC Altmar that caused us a lot of problems in the games that we... Um, I think it was the second leg. I think he was suspended for the first leg, weren't he? Um, but the, the 19-year-old Hungarian left back, he was quite good. You know, so it, it, they've... They've done their business early. They've identified the targets, done their business early, and they're going to be probably a little more settled, yeah. you know, in in what they what they're wanting to do because they've had that new manager from the start of preseason. You know, the players that were there that haven't been sold off. You know, they they understand the philosophy of the player, uh, the manager. Sorry, the players that have come in. There's going to be a lot of understanding where. Now, okay, we haven't signed anyone. The players have been there around Moyes, but last season was pretty poor. And the the players are professionals. They're going to get on with their job. But all this circus around the football club with, you know, the rice going, not being able to sign replacements and and all the rumours that we're here flying about, it will affect us. And it's just, you know, do we see a Moyes 11 that is, we're going to sit behind the ball and try and catch him on the break? But if you look at Bournemouth of last season, as I said, new manager, I get new ideas and new and new signings. But we took the game to Bournemouth last season and we tore them to pieces. So you've sort of got to look at as much as the new manager, the new philosophy that he's bringing in, some of that players in that side that are going to start on Saturday would have been there last season and thinking, hold on a minute, you know, we had our asses handed to us last season. Yeah. You know, so it, for me, we've got to start on a positive foot. You know, we can't afford to be too negative going to, into this fixture. Yeah, well, that, and that that's the thing, isn't it? Like you said, we're going to be potentially playing a, a new system or, you know, a system we haven't played so much. Um, mm. There's a lot of change. But yeah, right. I, I think it's so important to try to, to win this game, not just, you know, for the obvious, just the, the three points, but just with everything that's been going on around the club at the moment, I think a win going out there, putting that marker yeah. down, will you know really give the fan base a lift and really, I think, settle a lot of worries, a lot of nerves. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, give us that much needed positivity where I think a loss would be the opposite and it would just add that pile yeah. on of, of, of worry, of, of negativity. And um, yeah, I mean, look, if we did go on, like you said, on the front foot, and play more positive, and uh, go for it. I think that as well is something that can 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 give us a lift. But I can't mm. see us playing much good football this season, especially away from home. But look, I've always said this: like, if you're going to play crap football, just make sure it's effective. Like you're winning with it, you're winning games. <laughs> I can't. That's it. Yeah, man. being being sort of mediocre or being crap. You know, bang av- or bang average and playing crap football to me, I don't accept that. Like, I can't. What's the no, point? No. You know, if you're not, if you're not really, if you're not going to achieve anything, you're not going to be competing up. If it's not going to be that effective, what's the point? We might as well be entertained and be, you know, mid table mm. or, or in a relative. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm exactly with you, mate. Like you said, if you're going to play badly, be effective at playing badly and get the results. You know, and last season at times we played badly and you know. <laughs> Didn't get the results, you know, and and got got our asses handed to us, so to speak. So it's going to be tough. Opening day is always tough. You sometimes you can't read too much into it, but I think, like you said, a positive result for us will will give us good stead going into the Chelsea fixture. You know, 
losing losing this one with everything going on at the moment around the football club, losing the club captain, potentially losing Pakatai, you know, a loss would be devastating, I think, to start the season that way. Yeah, no, absolutely, mate. Um, so, you know, like I said, but having those those new signings, I think, even in the squad can give us a lift, could give the team a lift, give the fans a lift. Um, maybe I think it's probably good. It's probably a positive that our first game is away from home because mm. there is a bit of tension, a bit of nerves um, and a bit of pressure around the fan base. And I think it being away from home first game, it gives the players a chance to play with a, without that much pressure, without that pressure of the home yeah. crowd on their shoulders. They can go out, you know, set down a mark. Like I said, then if they go out, we go out and win that game or play well and, and that we come to the next game, the Chelsea game, we're going to go into that game thinking, yeah, OK, we can get something. Yeah, yeah, we, we mm-hmm. a bit more belief. There's a bit more buzz around the stadium, you know, rather than... Nothing, like, nothing to fear attitude. Yeah, like if we lose, yeah. then, you know, we're, you're always going to be up for a London derby, but I think there's going to be more of that, like, oh, shit, we could be in for a drub in there. And it, it just puts a little yeah. bit of that, that, that pressure on. So, yeah, hugely, hugely important. But, yeah, I think that's the... As fixtures go opening fixtures... You know, it's it's a tough one because like, we don't have the best record there, and people are taking it for granted. But as opening fixtures go, it's probably one of the best ones we've had in a long time. Yeah, definitely, mate. Definitely. You know, we're so used to starting against the so-called big six, so um, it yeah. is quite nice again to get someone. And like you said, away from home, you know, we'll we'll wait and see what happens. But you you know, as always, we're 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 optimistic as West Ham fans, and I'm going to ask you on your prediction on this one, mate. Oh, we're not doing. Are we not doing lineups? Are we not doing our team? Well, I was going to say about doing team, but then I'm sitting there thinking it's a bit. We don't know who we're going to have. <laughs> All right, should we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, should we do our team based on? Let's say Maguire and Ward Prowse aren't going to be available, right? Because probably they probably won't be. They'll be on the bench. So let's say Alvarez, right? And let's do our yep. lineup if Alvarez. So I'll say. This is what I... Okay, yeah, I was going to say what I think he'll do, but this is what I want to do. Okay, so I'll put that out of my... Because yeah. I would like to see Ariola start, but I think he'll start Fabianski, right? But Ariola in goal, mm-hmm. Emerson left back, Aguered Zuma, Soufal. Yep. I'm going to go on the basis that Paqueta is still at West Ham player, as much as it's mm-hmm. looking dicey at the moment. Downs and Paqueta in the middle. I'm going to go four nows, number 10. Yeah. Ben Rama on the left, Bowen on the right, Mubama up top. Oh, Franny Youngster straight in. I like great. it, Dan. I like it, mate. <laughs> yeah. I've, I, 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 with your back line, I'm, I'm totally in. I agree with that. That would be my back four and, and the goalkeeper. Um, I would go Pakatar, probably four nows. Bowen, Ben Rama, but I'd go for Danny Ings. I know I keep saying he's not the lone striker, but I go for experience over youth. Mm-hmm. That's you know, the reason I... why I didn't go for Ings is the lone striker. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. I, I, look, Antonio, I didn't. I, I would have gone with him as a lone striker option, but I just feel like he, he's heads out the door. Um, and, and not only that, he ain't had a lot of minutes, has he? No, no, he's he's not going to be. You'd you'd rather a, a sort of half fit Antonio coming on the last half hour of the game, you know, with tired defenders that type of thing, instead yeah. of him starting and then bringing on Danny Ings. So if he speak. stays, I feel like that's the way to use him this season, and and yeah. I think he could be effective at, at that. You know, let him really maximise his minutes in those short amount of times, and just you know, get yeah. all out. Um, so, so yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, when it comes to score predictions, oh, my God. I, I, why do I do this? Why do I go into a season and I'm feeling so down and dumped, so negative, right? But when, it come, when the game comes and that you start to get to the game time, you start to feel that magic, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it happens, I'm, mate, all the time. I'm, 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 I'm going to say West Ham win. I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm smoking. But I'm going to say two... 2-1 West Ham. Do you know what? I'm going to say 1-0 West Ham. I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there. We're going to get a clean sheet and nick a game 1-0. All so, right. Um, yeah. Is it that 
as we always know, and as I always keep saying, there's never an easy game in the Premier League, you know, but let's hit the ground running. Let's get these three points over the, over the, you know, and done and, and give ourselves a bit of positivity going into the Chelsea fixture next week. But um, yeah, Dan, thanks very much for joining me on this uh, edition of the big match preview. There will be a preview for the Chelsea fixture. I, I won't be on this one. So I don't know whether Dan, you're going to be taking over the mental for me um, going into that one. But yeah, um, one thing left to say, mate. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons.